we thank you, Lord, Lord. When we magnify you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we worship you this morning. Indeed, Lord, it is only by your grace that, Lord Almighty, we stand in awe of you. Therefore, Lord, we lift our hearts unto you. We raise our voices unto you, our Father. We declare glory to your name, Jehovah God. Holy is your name, our Father. Great is your faithfulness, Almighty God. I want us to welcome one another and the service. Just turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you're in your father's house. Just tell your neighbor rejoice you're in your father's house. You're in your father's house. Indeed, it is important that we feel good about it because in our father's house, we have the right to rejoice. Not because situations are very nice, but we are in the presence of the Most High God and we rejoice in Him. I want us to read together uh, as I welcome all those that are maybe even washing from home and even those that are within the sanctuary. Feel welcome, all of you. I want us to do the scripture reading from the book of uh, Psalm 77. It's a psalm that has blessed us. Those who have been there in the morning devotion, it's a psalm that has really blessed us over the week. And I believe that God will bless us together. Let's read together. And we read with an attitude of who is this that we are talking about? Who is this that we are reading about? I cried out to God with my voice. To God with my voice. And I gave a ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My heart was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and I was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of the ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart and my spirit makes diligent such. Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed forever? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has his anger shut up his tender mercies? And I say, this is my anguish, but I will remember the ears of the light hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Your way, O God, is the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O oh God. The waters saw you. They were afraid. The depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies sent out their sound. Your arrows also flashed about. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea. Your path in the great waters. And your footsteps were not known. You read your people like a frog by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Praise the Lord. Born as we son. On Wednesday, I tried to see my way to Kikuyu, I was unable to see it. I missed my way to get to Kikuyu town from the highway because it was very rainy and it was very stormy as we finished our midweek service. And you have never trusted God to get to your house like I did on Sunday. You've never. You only make a prayer. So the next inlet was in Sigona. And it was also almost hundred percent that I can miss it. So between the entrance and Sigona, I interceded like I have never prayed. So it is not just to be taken for granted 
that you are able to move from one point A to point B. And therefore, as the incense team comes under the leadership of our very own Doreen and Esther, let us help us rejoice, and especially me, help me rejoice that I reached my house even on Wednesday. God bless you.
trust in you. We will trust in you. Even when it is dark. Oh, we will trust you every time of the day and every time of the night. We shall render our hearts to trust you in every season, to trust you for who you are, because you have never let us go. Oh, you are faithful all the time, oh God. We have tested you, and we have known that you are faithful, oh God. Oh, our hearts will trust you, Lord. We will trust you, Lord. We continue to trust you, Lord. Oh, we declare our trust in you, Lord. Oh, takaba mo shana ba ya sakaba. Rema sheka ba mo saya na makata. Oh, ramo seke tere ne mo shala makata. My heart will trust in you. My heart will trust in you. My heart will trust. bless you Lord we desire that you continue to increase in us you increase in us so that we may continue to trust you more we pray that Lord you may increase in us in us you may increase in us just to make that prayer this morning. Father, we pray that you may increase in us. We pray that you may increase in us, O God. Oh, open our hearts, enlarge our hearts to accommodate more of you, our Father. Oh, salabo seketele masheta. Rema shekabo satela babo shakata. Oh,
Father, may you increase in us. May you increase in us. May you increase in our lives. Oh, Rabo Sakabaya Seta. Oh, Rakabo Sekete Kereba Seka. Zaidi Yakotu Naitaji Wad. Zaidi Na Zaidi Na Zaidi Na Zaidi Wad. Reba Sekerebo Sadeba Karaba Sedamaka. Rema se kabo solo boko se deleva. Ora mo se delele mo sakata. Father, more of you is what we desire. More of you, more of you, more of you. Ma kada ma mo se kete deleva. Give you glory. We give you glory. Ma se delele mo sakata. Rabo Sayalabas,
Hallelujah. Let's celebrate him in the house today. There's such a sweet spirit in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Hey, hey, who comes to 
on our side. Yes. Who can be against us? Yes. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor. 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 If the Lord is on my side, you're wasting your time. Because no one can be against me. The enemy could be wasting a lot of his time. Because already on the side of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Glory. Well, okay, okay, okay. Now we can't continue singing. But if I was given an opportunity, we would just sing today. <laughs> Glory to God. Let us prefer that with the Holy Communion. Take your seats. Our very elders, no, and the deacons, kindly come and serve us because the temptation of continuing to sing. I'm almost being converted to a praise and worship team. Person. I don't know. It's great. It's good to be in the presence of our Father. Buona Svetana. Some of us never knew. Some of never have, have never known the love of a physical father. Let me tell you, though I don't know it, I, I am Ugu, Sidani, comparable. Buona Svia San. So let us feel good in the presence of our Father with no apologies. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the Holy Communion. We thank you as we commune together with you, our Father. As we share in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, because you did not spare your son. The only begotten of the Lord shed his blood that today we may remember his death and his resurrection. And walk shoulder high. And walk strong. Walk protected. Walk secure in you, O oh Lord. And as we fellowship together, Lord, I pray that our hearts shall commune with you, Jehovah, to receive assurance, new assurance, new hope, that Lord, as we eat your body, as we drink your blood, our lives shall be transformed. Our lives shall experience the goodness, the kindness, and the love of our God. Even in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's be served according to the instructions that we've given by our ushers. In the meantime, I will be giving the announcements. No, let's be served so that we can uh, eat together. Don't want to interfere with the sweetness and the flavor of the body and the blood. As you take your elements, please wait on our brethren so that we can eat together. How sweet it is to line up and partake of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Redeemer. We bless the Lord. Have a new song as you line up for the elements. Tell the Lord something into your heart. This communion is not like any other. That today may not be like any other that you lined up for the elements. It will be a day of greatness together with our children. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise, our Father. We appreciate your availability unto us, O oh Lord, to make a difference in our lives, our Father. Even when we were lost, O oh Lord. You died for us, our Father. We give you glory, Lord, and we adore you, Lord.
oh, we are thankful. There is another serving point somewhere. We praise the Lord for that. good sirens in the waiting of the Lord. Beautiful, beautiful. Continue to wait for our brethren as they take their elements. There is no rain in front here. There is still a space for a few. Maybe those who are lining up there can be directed here just to shorten the time. A number like 10 cannot still come. As we wait, look at your neighbor and ask her or him, do you know what you're holding? It's not just a piece of biscuit. It's not just another juice. This means so much. It has an eternity backing. And we really appreciate the Lord for appearing himself, even for our lives, a day like today. This is one of the deep things of God, if you did not know. This is one of the deep things of God, communing together. We are good. All of us are served. Let even our deacons also serve and get set out. And let us now partake together. I'll make the announcements. We appreciate all the guests for fellowshipping with us this morning. One of our elders, Abednego Ganda. Abednego, you can lift your hand. We'll meet with you briefly after the, sun, after the service at the raised platform in the sanctuary. We are all invited to the School of Wisdom this Wednesday from 7.45 p.m. to 9 p.m. here in the sanctuary and on our YouTube channel. We are all invited to the Hour of Incense morning devotion every day from Monday to Sunday from 5 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. 
via the Google Meet platform, we are all asked to participate. We shall have corporate prayer and fasting, fasting this Friday from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. We shall conclude and break bread together at 6.15 p.m. via the Google Meet platform. The Women of Grace Retreat will take place on Monday, 2nd May, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Cool Breeze Gardens, Mudaiga. All ladies are requested to attend. The FGCN medical team invites you to Health Education Forum on Saturday 8th, May immediately after the service here in the sanctuary. We shall have a free and voluntary weighing and BMI, ladom blood sugar and pressure screening for all the people above 30 years of age. The next children at dedication will take place on 15th May 22 to 20, uh, 2022 during the Saturday service. The parents are requested to liaise with Pastor Isaac. Uh, and for today, we can liaise with Pastor Leroy for that. Because we can't see Pastor Isaac now. The Overcomers Ministry invites you for practical wisdom for living. I started through the book of Proverbs. The lounge will take place on Sunday, 5th June, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. here in the sanctuary. We are all asked to register with 300 shillings. The Almod Institute of Ministry invites all of us to the School of the Holy Spirit, Module 1, which will begin on Tuesday, 10th May, from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. via Google Meet platform. We are requested to register with 1,000 before 6th of May. That is our announcement. Now, we want to bless our children so that they can go to their classes and also do what we love to do and we know why we love to do it. That is the giving. So tell your neighbor as our children lies up, it is time to give and it is time to be blessed. Our children, I want to give my daughter an opportunity to come and pray for the children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Since we are to know God for the gift of life, gift of peace, oh dear Lord, that you are enjoying even as a family, oh dear Lord, even as the children go to their, their places of study, oh dear Lord, may you bless them, may you protect them, oh dear Lord, and may you continue growing them, oh God, in stature, oh God, and uh, may they grow knowing you, oh God, and uh, loving your things, oh God. This is precious name, and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Well. I am still safe, even after service. I hope. Buenas, my son. So let's have our ashes give out the envelopes so that we can uh, worship the Lord in our giving. And if we do it very fast, the better. I am learning short of time. And I encourage that as we always get into the sanctuary, there at the back, there, is, there are the envelopes. Carry the envelope, package it before, so that by the time that we are saying give, we just come and give. And may the Lord bless you so much. Those who have done it, the better. Just start coming. Just start coming. Don't wait. Just come and over and come share free. Come celebrating. Come telling the Lord, this is a confirmation that you gave me. And I'm having something to return, even in your basket. Oh Lord, Father, we thank you. Remember, we are in the mode of doing it in a different way. And some of these are the very deep things of God. Even the fast fruit, the tithes, and the overings. There 
there was a special song for the choir. Choir, come. Just come. Just come. take this opportunity and welcome uh, Pastor James, who is the senior elder, Fountain Gate Church, Nairobi. And may the Lord bless you so much. Let's welcome him with a clap. Oh, hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. I said good morning, everybody. I said it like I'm singing it, and I want you to answer like you are singing it. Say good morning, everybody. And how are you this morning? Give your neighbor a high five and say, you are here and I am here. So we, so we are here. We announce a new series of teaching the deep things of God. I must tell you that uh, the Lord placed this in my heart on, on Thursday the 14th during our psalm, The first two sessions of our psalm on that day as Pastor Randolph was teaching. And for those who would like to listen, please go to our YouTube channel and listen to session 13 and 14. In those two sessions, Pastor Randolph talked about uh, the depth that is in God. And as I was speaking, I was sitting right here. I felt that that needed to be picked and expounded. The same, same way, Sadara picked the burden to expound on the perfect man that Pastor Thamo was teaching about. I felt that that thing about the depth of God needs to be expounded. So I don't know how many sessions we're going to have, but I can assure you this morning and on Wednesday, God willing, and as we progress, we'll be looking at the deep things of God. Allow me to read Psalm 42. It's always good to read a psalm because psalms are very easy to understand. Before we go to the Gospels and uh, the Epistles 
and some of the, po the other poetic books and the, the, the book of Moses. So I'll read Psalm 42, verse 1 to 8. In fact, we will read together because it is on the screen. Let's read together loudly. One to go. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? For I used to go with the multitude. And why are you disquieting within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me a prayer to the God of my life. Now I know we have read Psalm 42 in the past but most of the time we read just verse 1. We, in fact we sing verse 1. As the deer pants for the waters for the water brooks so my, pant, my soul pants my soul for you O oh God. Uh, but now we we'll begin to read this chapter a bit differently. Because locked up in this chapter is a very powerful, eternal principle. Locked up in this chapter, as, as you are about to see, is a very powerful, eternal principle. And it's the principle of the hunger and thirst that man must have for God. The principle of the hunger and thirst that man must have for God. And how man should go about that hunger he has for God. It is Jesus in Matthew 5 who said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. So it's a blessing to have hunger, a sustained, constant, continuous, sustained hunger and thirst for God. It's, it's a curse, therefore, not to have hunger and thirst for God. If you find that you are not on this journey where you are constantly longing and yearning to know, to see, to find, to connect. If you find that your life lacks this ingredient of always being hungry and always thirsty, that indicates a problem. And so as man hungers and thirsts for God, we begin to understand that our hunger and thirst for God, which is called blessing, actually comes from God. You cannot give yourself hunger and thirst for God. It must come from Him. It must come from Him because of your heart disposition or orientation. So God knows who is hungry for Him. Who is desperate for him. And when he sees a man or a woman who is desperately in need of him. God will give you not just your own personal desire. Like the deer that pants for the waters. But God will give you a God given desire. To long for him. According to Philippians 2 and verse 13. The Bible says it is God who is at work in us. Both to will and to do what we should do. So we don't do anything because we want to. We do it because first of all, he gives us the willingness. He is the one, the one at work in us for both. To will or to desire and then to be able to do it. So in our journey of yearning for God, we have to be helped by God. He has to help us. Man naturally does not long for God. Man naturally longs for avocado. Longs for salon stick. 
not for God. After the fall, we don't naturally just long for God. But when he begins to work within you, and I'm praying that that work will begin in each of us. Can I hear an amen? amen? You know, earlier on when we were singing and worshiping, from where I was sitting, I could scan around and see what is going on in the meeting. And I could see some of us who are indifferent. They're not interested. Yeah? In, the, in today's language, hawashikanishi. Hawashikanishi, kabisa. Ni kama wanaangalia tu kuona who is around. Ni kaona si vizuri hivyo, hivyo kwa hivyo. So the psalmist, and is a psalm of the sons of Torah, rather Korah, sons of Korah. Is it Korah or Torah? Sons of Korah. Sorry, my, I wrote Torah here. It should be Korah. Let me just correct it right away. The psalm of the sons of Korah is an expression of the yearning for God in the midst of distress. And that redefines distress, discomfort, afflictions, the pains we go through in life. Did you know that nothing can happen to you being a son of God if God does not allow it? So that is to say God allows the pains you go through in life. The question is, why would he allow afflictions? Why should a righteous man like Daniel be thrown to the den of lions? Why should righteous men like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be thrown into the fire? Why does God allow affliction in the path of the righteous? From the reading of this Psalm 42, then you understand from the sons of Korah that it is in moments of great distress where capacity for God is built and capacity to long for God. After all, you're already dis desperate, and unless somebody helps you, you have nowhere. And so some of the troubles we go through in life were actually not so bad after all. It was supposed to be a moment where you can yearn for God again. If you read the history of the nation of Israel, most of the time they went to captivity or some form of trouble or the rains were stayed or the rains were stayed away or the clouds were shut or heavens were shut. It was usually the time after major prosperity and when man prospers, he has a tendency to disconnect from God. So the withdrawal, so to say, of that prosperity would of course allow affliction and pain. That pain is not supposed to, is not meant to punish you. That pain is meant to draw you back to and point you back to God. They said, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul with me, within me. For I used to go with the multitude. Many of us are going with the multitude. Psalm 42, verse 4. Many are going with the multitude. But this series of teaching about the deep things of God is about each of us appreciating that we have not known all that is knowable in God and we have not received all that we could receive from him. You know, there is depth in God. God is deep. God is deeper than Indian Ocean. There are certain parts of the ocean where no one has ever dared go into. Some sections like I hear of the Bermuda Triangle. No one dares even swim anywhere near there. Because at that particular point in the ocean, the ocean sucks in everything that comes anywhere near. Be it a ship or a fish or a man or a piece of metal. So there's a depth in the ocean that no one no one, does not, no one knows up to now as we speak. There are depths in God. When you begin to separate yourself, therefore, you are not just going to go with the walking with the multitude, but you want to go to God's own house and know him for yourself. You don't want to have the corporate pilgrim. Everyone is going, everyone says praise God, but you want to have a personal knowledge of him. That's the time then you begin to appreciate the depth that is in God. And you begin to seek and yearn for that. 
Verse 7 says, deep calls unto deep. That journey happens because something in you is being invited to something in God. That journey from just walking with the multitude to know him at a personal level, a journey of yearning and longing will happen because there is something in God calling out for something in you. Because there is depth in God. God is deep. But watch this. His depth is supposed to also make you deep. Yes, he is deep. But God also wants to make you deep. His depth should make you deep. You cannot be any deeper than you are deep in God. And the more you appreciate his depth, the more you come into, you journey to the fullness of his depth the more you become deep. Now, not many people are deep. I have realized of late, especially during this campaign period. When you hear some people speaking, then you know some people are very shallow. But what makes the difference between one man and another is how deep they were in whatever they are doing. Now, many of us are lacking that depth that is in God. So, that's why the depth in God is calling for depth in you. Because his depth, it is his depth that makes you and I deep. His depth makes you and I deep. Where depth here means profundity. P-R-O-F-U-I-N-D-I-T-Y. Profundity. Profundity. Or greatness. Right? Or immensity. That's depth. Profundity. P-R-O-F-U-N-D-I-T-Y. Profundity. Greatness. is an easier word. Greatness. And immensity. So, we are mourning. The loss of our president. But what we're missing really about him is the depth that was in him. Not his cast, not his suits. No one is going to be remembered because of your nails or how you used to dress. Not at all. It's the depth. Because there was something in you that was applying to us. So if there was no depth in you, well, it may just be good readers. So none of us should be shallow now that we are connected to God. Because the creation waits for a people that are deep in God that can introduce them to the depth of God. And I'm announcing therefore the, object, the objective we have as we share throughout this series of teaching. Really it is to shift each one of us from a place where you are so light. Almost inconsequential. Almost making no contribution. Almost adding no value to a place where everything that is locked up in God. In his deep. Because God puts his treasure in his depth. The things you find on the service are really all the treasures of God. Just like you and I also. The most precious thing in your house, I don't know what it is, but you don't put it at the veranda outside there, at the entrance. That particular place is not accessed by any other hands apart from my hands and that of my, my wife. We make sure nothing else is kept there. No, no cooking fat. And no face oil, no towels, nothing else is kept there. So that you don't just come there anytime, anyhow. I'm sure the same case with most of us here. And of course, of course, our school certificates are also there. And I know most of us, the only precious thing you have are school certificates. And it's okay because you need them to go to the next level. I know, I know. I still can go pull out for you my living certificate. Kagema Primary School, 1981. It's there. I have another one from Meru Technical School. Those are the certificates and the KCPE and all those things are somewhere there. Although CPE is Kuzetu, 
It was not printed. It was a imejazo wa namwalimu. Imejazo wa kule gedongoli. Lakini iko tu, iko tu. The most precious things of God are kept in the deepest part in God. Unfortunately, many people are interacting with God on the service, so what they go is the service, which includes bread. Mm-hmm. It includes healing. The Bible says healing is children's bread. These things are on the service. There are things that are greater and better in God, more precious than bread, provision, nice clothes, and a good car. There are things that are deeper in God. They are called the deep things of God. So as a man desires the deep things of God, so also he has an opportunity to have depth in himself. If the deep in God does not call for deep in you, and if the deep in you does not long for the deep in God, then you remain shallow. So this series of teaching is about encouraging each of us to go deeper in God or with God. Because remember, if you want bread, he'll give you bread. If you want healing, he'll give you healing. If you want a job, he'll give you a job. But there are other things that are more precious and they are also yours because you are his son. In fact, I need to tell you this. Bread is not inheritance. But the treasures of God, that is really what is your inheritance in God. Are we doing well so far? Mr. Simon Curry, are we doing well so far? In a flow. Okay. You see, God may be unknown to you, but God is not unknowable. You know, those days, the deepest song we knew, the deepest, was that one and another one. Hey, jabba, jabba, jabba. No, no, let's translate it. Let's translate it. Let's translate it. How do you sing it in Swahili? Hey. And we would sing for 20 minutes. We are saying the same thing. Eshuja, shuja, 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 nina, niye. Hallelujah. Then later on, I found there are some songs that are a bit deeper. You sing, you sense, you are singing something. You see, God may be unknown to you. And I'm avoiding saying, don't think God is as shallow as you are. Don't reduce God to your very subjective, sometimes limited knowledge of him. But rather be like the sons of Korah, who has the appreciation. There must be something more about God. There must be something more in God. And that more is what I want. And it's called the deep things in God. It's the deep things of God that become your inheritance. Not bread and the other things. God may be unknown to you. But God is not unknowable. Meaning, the fact that you don't know him don't mean you can't know him. The Athenians in the book of Acts chapter 17. They had altars to all their known gods. And we know that they knew this God because they gave them a name. And the name of a thing shall therefore be how... You identify or you show that you know that thing. The name of a thing is the way how when you mention, when it is mentioned by you, then the thing responds. So they had altars to all their known known gods. Artemis, Diana, etc. But then, deep was calling to deep in them. They had this feeling. Remember the feeling we were talking about earlier on? They had this feeling. There is another god Yes, we don't know him, but we have an altar for him because he too, someday maybe, we will know him. So they had an altar with an inscription, the unknown God. Many of us in this room this morning do not know a certain aspects about God. Many of us have an altar 
to an unknown God who, yes, may not be known to you, but he is knowable. He's knowable. And so that's when why the, the apostle Paul came around and as he looked around and he saw that altar, he told them, that one you do not know is the one I preach. And with many words, I'm sure he explained to them his own encounter with God. Because there was a time when Paul, he was called Saul those days, did, not, did also not know him. There's a time he too did not know him. And God made himself known to Paul. That's called revelation. The self-disclosure of God. God is not knowable unless God chooses to make himself known to you. That's why the cry for him is important. Because God cannot cry for more of himself to you or in you for you. You cry. You become the son of Korah. You cry. Then when you cry, because something in you is crying for something in God, God will supply to all your needs. He will. And so it takes apostles and prophets generally to reveal the deep things of God. It's apostles and prophets who give us the doctrine of the deep things of God. Because, you see, the deep things of God can only be known by revelation. And apostles and prophets predominantly, according to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 5, operate in the grace and anointing of revelation. They bring to us the revelation of the mystery or the secret of God. God is not secretive, but God has a secret. God is not secretive. Every secret in God, in God, he wants it made known in the fullness of time. So he is not secretive, but God in God is a secret. God may be unknown, but he is knowable. Some of the people saw things in God and they were told by God, don't tell anyone. For this level of revelation, they have to be on the mount of transfiguration to see it for themselves also. Some things that Paul saw, he was told, don't preach these things. Don't preach these things. There are certain things that no one can even preach to you. You have to see it for yourself. And when you see it, you are commanded, don't tell anyone. Some things that are locked up in God. Friends. The depth of God also known as the mystery of God. Write that down. The depth of God is also known as the mystery or the secret of God. The depth of God is also known as the mystery of God. The depth of God also known as the mystery of God gives us depth. Mm -hmm. So when you receive God's depth, the depth of God coming into you makes you deeper. Some time ago, we had to dim, dim, sink a borehole. And uh, so I, I got involved watching what goes on. Of course, I knew the science behind drilling, but not, you know, in a practical way. So I was there. And we went something like 200 meters. That's quite deep to get the good palatable water. 200 meters, that's quite deep. And, you know, these guys have things they call drilling rigs. They keep on adding, making it deeper and longer. And the deeper it goes, the more purified and sweeter the water. And we had to hit several quivers, several, you know, rock, water, water bearing rocks. We had to go through several of them. And the longer the, dr the drilling rig got, the deeper we could go. So I can say, it's not our well that was 200 meters. It is the drilling machine that had that capacity of being 200 meters. If it could only go 50 meters, we could have a shallow well. Maybe 50 is not too shallow because that's already 150 feet. And most wells, average wells are just between 60 and 90. But really the depth, we can't pride in having a deep well. We can pride in having contracted a company that has a machine that can go very deep. So the depth of God that you allow into you is what becomes your depth. That's why the depth you have is crying for more depth. And the depth in God is challenging your current depth. Because depth 
really talks about capacity. If I have not forgotten my physics, is in mathematics. Volume of a cylinder is height times square pi r squared, which is the, the, the area of the circle. So pi, uh, yeah, but nego, man, you saw that my, you saw that me out today. Praise God. Pi r squared, where r is the radius of the hole, that's the, the, that's the area of the circle, times the height, the depth, then you can tell how much water you have in that shaft. Is that right? Okay, so the deeper the shaft is, then the more water we are talking about. For those who know about shallow wells, when you hit that quiver and water begins to gush out, you can never have more water in that your well. More than the circumference, not the circumference, but the surface area of the well and the depth you went to. So God's depth, after all, is accomplishing more than one thing in us. It is creating in us capacity, number two, to also receive what is in God. So God's depth is giving us depth and supplying to us the things that are in the depth of God, the deep things of God. The depth that is in God is the depth we should have in our lives. But oftentimes, God is deeper in himself than we are in him. Yet, everything he has and he is, is meant for you. God's depth is actually meant to be part of your inheritance. It's yours. God does not need depth. But God has depth because he knew we needed depth. So the depth in God is crying for depth in us. So that ultimately, the two have become one. So that ultimately, everything in the heavenly realm, every heavenly reality became another reality. As deep as God is, so God's son must be deep in the earth. You see, God is only knowable by revelation. In Matthew 11, verse 25 to verse 30, we lay emphasis on verse 27. Matthew 11, verse 25 to 30, but we focus on verse 27. Verse 27. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, who is speaking, Jesus Christ. And no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. You cannot know God. You cannot know the depth of God. You cannot access the depth in God unless God chooses to allow you. In Matthew 16, we know from verse 18, rather verse 15. Okay, verse 13. Matthew 16, from verse 13 to verse 19. We know, but we lay emphasis on verse 17. When Jesus asked them, besides what they say about me, who do you say that I am? And Simon Barjona gave the right answer. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus commanded him in verse 17. He said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah. He referred to him according to his natural lineage, the human being he was. He told him, Simon Barjona, you are blessed for flesh and blood. It's not in your human capacity. It's not flesh and blood that has revealed this to you. My father, but my father who is in heaven. So unless God chooses to reveal himself to you, you can last forever and never know him. Because God looks at the heart. He looks at the motive. Why do you want to know me? If you can get the right answer to that question, my friend, he will fall into your life like a waterfall. You may have to ask him for a break in the evening. You the kulala. You may have to tell him, Father, just because I'm still human, allow me to sleep for four hours. We meet in the morning. Because when the waterfall of God's revelation begins to fall upon the soul of a man, it's more than you can handle. It's more than you can handle. The depth of God, also known as the mystery of God, gives us depth. As God makes himself known to us by revelation. It's called the self-disclosure. Revelation is simply the self-disclosure of God. When God chooses to disclose himself to you. That's what we call revelation. The self-disclosure of God. If you 
could reveal himself to Simon by Jonah. He also revealed himself to Peter. I mean, he took them up on the mountain. They saw things that they were commanded not to tell anyone. If he could do all of that, he can pick you also and make himself known to you. So this series of teachings about raising our revelation configurations and parameters as individuals and as a church for us to step to certain dimensions locked up in God but are meant to be part of our inheritance. You see, the absence of revelation or the self-disclosure of God is called darkness. So we read in Genesis 1 verse 1 and 2 that in the beginning God created heavens and earth and then we read in verse 2 that darkness covered the face of the deep. And darkness simply means the absence of the self-disclosure of God. No wonder the first thing God creates, Genesis 1 verse 3, is light. The first thing that the deep gives or brings forth or creates is called light. Some of these are points I got from Pastor Randolph when he was preaching. Uh, that day on, for, on 14th of uh, April, just the other week. The first thing that the deep gives or creates or brings forth is light. But you know, those light moments happen when we are sitting down listening to the word. So we have a very simple methodology of how we'll bring everyone to depth. It's by this teaching of the word we're doing. As we teach, something begins to shift in you. As we teach, you have your Eureka moment right there. As we teach, something is highlighted in your spirit. As we teach, you feel the need to go and study a certain book of the Bible. That's the methodology. Because God just creates by saying, let there be. So that's what I'm doing. Let there be light in our lives. Let there be depth in our lives. But remember that the darkness is on the face of the deep. Verse 2. Darkness is covering. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. That means whatever is in God is not disclosed yet. For God has not started to disclose himself. When he does, the first thing he will will be to release light. Okay, so the first thing that the depth of God or the, the first of the deep things in God is light. The first thing the depth in God will produce, will always produce or create is light so that then we can read Psalm 119 your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my paths so as we go into the depth in God and you know God is deep God is deep God is deep he is scaringly deep he is scaringly deep Scaringly deep. That's why Paul would say, What no I have seen. Even after we have seen all these things, no ear has heard. Even after we have had all these things, no heart of man has conceived. Even after we have had all these ideas and thoughts, there is still much more. No I have seen. And it is all locked up in God. And thank God for His Spirit. I'm now quoting 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9 and 10. Thank God for his spirit because his spirit gives us access to what is locked up in God. Because what is locked up in God is spiritual in nature. And we can only maneuver in that realm if we have the help of the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Who above and among all things is our teacher. He comes to instruct us on how to become heirs of God. And so, because your five minutes are over, and I don't want to give myself some more five minutes, let me now wrap it up right here. But we'll continue, God willing, on Wednesday. When we gather on Wednesday, we'll look at a man called Job. man called Job. Who went through such catastrophic loss. He lost all his properties. All his wealth. He lost his children. All of them. Even the girlfriends to the sons. He finally lost his health. And you know that today they say that your health is your wealth. Number one. 
So the man lost even his health. And when three of his friends heard about it, when Eliphaz, the termite, termite, the termite, this is Job 2 verse 11 and on. When Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namadite, when they heard about it, they booked an appointment to come and mourn and comfort him. It was not until chapter 11 when the third man I have mentioned, his name is Zophar the Namadite, had a chance to speak to Job. And when he did, he asked him several questions. Job 11 verse 7. It's a very good place to conclude this service. Job 11 verse 7. Put it up on the screen. What is Zophar doing? He is trying to help Job understand what is going on. Why the trouble? Why the loss? Why does it feel like God has hindered you from something? Why does it look like God put something away from you? It's not, it's not too far, but yet you can never lay hold on it. Why? So Mr. Job, can you search out the deep things of God? And can you find out the limits? The Almighty. Can you? You will never crack it. You'll never have certain levels of access and passwords in life until you can search out the depth that is in God. Some of the enigmas in our life, some of the circumstances, some of the constant, continuous troubles that almost became part of your life, they almost became your new name, will never be unwrapped and unraveled. You will never crack it until depth beckons on you. Then you shall say, ah, I now understand what was going on way back there, way back there. Not when you're in the shallow end. But when you come to the deep waters. Can you? And you know what? When, when Eliphaz asked him this question, it was like a moment of turning around. It's like that made Job become a bit sober. And that changed the story from that chapter 11. Look at what happens. God begins to, in a sense, disclose himself to Job. One day God will tell Job, stand up as a man, let's talk. Let me give you something that is in me that you had no idea about. The solution to many challenges many of us are going through in life is in God. But you cannot play prostitution with God. You can't come and have what you want and then run away. You can't just help yourself and then run away. God is covenantal. There are certain things in him, they are not hidden from you, they are hidden for you. So you have to make yourself available, you have to come to that dimension and depth in him to access that. Because we cannot use God. We cannot handle God in a consumeristic kind of a mentality. God is God. He is holy. God is God. He is almighty. He is omnipresent, he is omniscient. There are certain things right now in my own life I'm trying to understand what really is going on. I've been in a place asking him that question for years, not days, for years. Stuck in a place that certain things are sitting on my mind and I have made my prayer once or twice known to God. And yet I'm not hearing anything else apart from come up here. Exodus 24. Moses did not know the, 20, the Ten Commandments until he came to a place higher. So when he came to the place higher, God made the Ten Commandments known to him. While he was down here, he did not know about it. And God is calling us not just to a place higher, the height for depth, okay, but he's calling us also to a depth. There's that depth in God. It will change everything about your life. You will begin to discover why you were born. When you see the deep things that are locked up in God, you discover they are all locked up for you. And when you know him, then you know who you are. Man cannot know who he is unless you know he with whom we have to do. Our identity is in him. Our purpose is in him. Our mission in life is in him. Our destiny is in him. So if you don't know him, you don't know all those things about yourself. That is the problem 
we have in the 21st century the new age day where God is no longer absolute, is no longer there for, there for that necessary in life. And men are now learning to live by human rights, no longer by the depth that is in God. It will not be very long before man, corporately speaking, globally, will get so disappointed and frustrated, there will be a revival because man will come back to God in days that are coming. Because when we do all these things and we'll come back hungry and thirsty, we'll remember our God. Right in Babylon, we'll remember our God and we'll say we cannot sing his songs here. We'll go back to the city of God. There'll be a mass exodus back to the mount of God. Only if there'll be a witness in the earth. And I believe we are part of that witness company that will release a saving impression on the planet Earth in the day we live in. Stand up with me and thank God for his word. With your hands lifted up and your voice also lifted up. Everybody. Tell him, Lord, I'm ready for this series of teaching. I open my heart to learn your word. I hear deep is calling me and I'm willing to come. I hear you beckoning me. I'll come. I'll come to you with an open heart. I'll come to you with an open heart. With an open mind. Yes, the song will be sung one more time. I will come to you with an open heart. Bring a sacrifice of praise. I will come to you. We are coming to you, Lord, as a family. Would you raise those hands up, everybody? Would you raise your voice and begin to express your hunger and thirst for God? You are longing for Him? I will come to you. I will come to you. We will come to you as found and get charged in Nairobi. We will come to you. We will come to you. We will come. With open hands, oh God, we will come. Sing a song of praise. We will remember your mercies. Lord, your faithfulness. Oh, there's a good flow of God's spirit for prayer. Take two minutes and pray. Raise your voice and pray. You have been good to us in our journey so far. We are praying, take us beyond here. Take us beyond here. I will remember your mercy. Lord, your faithfulness. Lord, you are so good. You surround me with your favor. Oh the days Lord you're so good you surround me in favor oh God Lord you're so good you surround me with your favor oh and forever I will remember Lord your faithfulness Lord you're so good Lord your goodness surround me with your favor raise those hands I will remember Lord your goodness I pray that your goodness will fill our lives again Surround us, O oh God, with your favor. Oh. Now and forever. Leave those hands and worship God with me, everyone. Surround me with your favor. 
now and forever. Oh, the path has been protracted. We see a new day. We see a journey ahead of us. We see death ahead of us. So we begin to worship God by faith. Even if we must lean on our staff like Jacob, but we are seeing a new day, a new horizon, a new depth, a new hunger and thirst for God, a new reality in Him. Faithful Lord, all this journey. This is not the first time you are beckoning us deeper. I will remember. You have done that many times, and even this time we say, Yes, Lord, as you beckon us. I will remember your mercy, Lord. Follow me. around me with your favor oh Lord always and forever how many of us would say genuinely and truthfully that you sense God is calling you deeper lift your hands both of them how many will say that I know God will not frustrate my desire lift them higher lift them higher and pray this prayer after me say father I thank you for your word and I thank you for the depth which is in you. That depth is my inheritance. That depth is my blessing. That depth is my next level. That, le that depth is my next dimension. And I set my heart on a pilgrim. I set my heart on a journey to the depth in God and to receive the deep things that are in God. So help me God. Put your hands together and thank the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's like some of us just want to prolong the worship. Just take a minute and just do that if you want to do that. Lift your hands and raise your voice and thank him. Thank you for the journey. It's going to be adventurous. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be life transforming as we come to the deep things that are locked up in God. Here we coming to the death that is found in you, O oh God, O oh God. Here we are coming to the deep things. Look at your neighbor and tell him, Oha, the time has come for us to break camp one more time. Oh, come on, do it at the top of your voice one more time. The time has come for us to break the camp one more time. Turn to the other neighbor, say the time has come for us to accelerate our journey to the fullness of Christ. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and thank the Lord for this. Amen. Before we go, before we go, if you are in this service and you have not even started the journey, of salvation. You do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior at a personal level. Lift up your hand and we'll pray for you and you'll begin the journey right now. Lift up your hand. Shoot it up. Lift it up like mine, like this. Check around for me, please, if there be somebody near you lifting up their hands and carry them to come to, come to the front. Is there anyone on that side over there? If you see anyone, please tell them to come to the front. I know most of us are born again. But just in case we have someone who came or has been attending this service and you're not born again, raise your hand up. 
you have to lift it high for me to see even at the back over there. And if you are not born again and you are not able to come today, I pray that this same conviction will remain on your heart and God will arrest you one of these days and you will know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Let me pray to bless you now. Lift your hands. May the Lord company with you in the tent of your journey this week. May you know him as the most loving, the most caring father. And may his love expand the, your heart and make you more loving and also more lovable. May the father therefore cause you to obtain favor wherever you go this week. In the estate, in the farm, in the place of work, in the family, wherever you go, may you obtain the favor of God this week. I bless your bread and your water. I commit unto your bodies the divine healing of God. Because by the straps of Jesus, we were healed. And right now I decree healing upon you in the name of Jesus. For this is our inheritance in Christ. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious, be generous. Be magnanimous with you. In all that you do and say this week you will come back bolder more beautiful you will come back brighter because the Lord will cause his face to shine upon you hallelujah I want you to bless your neighbor now with the Acts 20 verse 32 find out your neighbor's name and you will read this verse for them as loud as you can Acts 20 verse 32 quickly please and where the word brethren is, you put the name of your neighbor. So now, Mama Jane, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Turn to the other neighbor. So now, Lala, from Nigeria, <laughs> I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Amen. Turn to the third person before we finish. James Booker. I commend you to God. My brother from Kitagera. The word of his grace which is able to build you up. Give you an inheritance. So before you go. Before you go. I want to ask as many of you as can.